Hello, once again to Tapinator. I am reading The Lightning Thief by Rick Roridan. This will be part three. Oh, by the way, I still have my tea. It's deliciousness. Uh, yeah, sorry. Let me get to the reading now. I hope you guys like this. I gave her my deluxe, I'll kill you later stare. Then I turned to face Miss Dodds, but she wasn't there. She was standing at the museum entrance, way at the top of the steps, gesturing impatiently at me to come on. How'd she get there so fast? I have moments like that a lot, when my brain falls asleep or something, and the next thing I know, I've missed something as if a puzzle piece fell out of the universe, and left me staring at the blank piece behind it. The school counselor told me it was part of my ADHD, my brain misinterpreting things. I wasn't so sure. I went after Miss Dodds. Halfway up the steps... I glanced back at Glover, Grover. He was looking pale, cutting his eyes between me and Mr. Bruner, like he wanted Mr. Bruner to notice what was going on. But Mr. Bruner was absorbed in his novel. I looked back up. Miss Dodds had disappeared again. She was now inside the building, at the end of the entrance hall. Okay, I thought. She's going to make me buy a new shirt for Nancy at the gift shop. But apparently, that wasn't the plan. I followed her, followed her deeper into the museum. When I finally caught up to her, we were back in the Greek and Roman section. Except for us, the gallery was empty. Miss Dodge stood with her arms crossed in front of a big marble frieze, frieze of the Greek gods. She was making this weird noise in her throat, like a growling. Even without the noise, I would have been nervous. It's weird being alone with a teacher, especially Miss Dodds. Something about the way she looked at this frise as if she wanted to pulverize it. You've been giving us problems, honey, she said. I didn't I did the safe thing and said, Yes, ma'am. She tugged on the cuff of her leather jacket. Did you really think you would get away with it? The look in her eyes was beyond mad. It was evil. She's a teacher, I thought nervously. It's not like she's going to hurt me. I said, I'll, I'll try it harder, ma'am. Thunder shook the building. We're not fools, Percy Jackson, Miss Dodd said. It was only a matter of time before we found you out. Confess, and you'll suffer less pain. I didn't know what she was talking about. All I could think of was the teachers must have found the illegal stash of candy I've been selling out of my dorm room. Or maybe they realized I got an, my essay on Tom Sawyer from the internet without ever reading the book. And now they were going to take away my grade. Or worse, they were going to make me read the book. Well, she demanded. Ma'am, I don't... Your time is up, she hissed. Then the weirdest thing happened. Her eyes began to glow like barbecue coals. Her fingers stretched, turning into talons. Her jacket melted into large, leathery wings. She wasn't human. She was a shriveled hag with bat wings and claws and a mouth full of yellow fangs. And she was about to slice me to ribbons. Then things got even stranger. Mr. Buhner would who had been out in front of the museum a minute before, wheeled his chair into the doorway of the gallery holding a pen in his hand. What ho, Percy! He shouted and tossed the pen through the air. Mrs. Dodge lunged at me. With a yelp, I dodged and felt talons slash the air next to my ear. I snatched the ballpoint pen out of the air, but when it hit my hand, it wasn't a pen anymore. It was a sword. Mr. Bruner's bronze sword, which he always used on tournament day. Mrs. Dodd spun towards me with a murderous look in her eyes. My knees were jelly. My hands were sinking so bad I almost dropped the sword. She snarled, Die, honey! And she flew straight at me. Absolute terror ran through my body. I did the only thing that came naturally. I swung the sword. The metal blade hit her shoulder and passed clean through her body as if she were made of water. Hiss! Mrs. Dodds was a sandcastle in a powder fan. She exploded into yellow powder, vaporizing on the spot, leaving nothing but a smell of sulfur and the dying screech and 
and a dying screech, and a chill of evil in the air, as if those two glowing red eyes were still watching me. I was alone. There was a ballpoint pen in my hand. Mr. Buner wasn't there. Nobody was there but me. My hands were still trembling. My lunch must have been contaminated with magic mushrooms or something. Had I imagined the whole thing? I went back outside. It had started to rain. Grover was sitting by the fountain. A museum mat, t map tented over his head. Nancy Bobofit was still standing there, soaked from her swim in the fountain, grumbling to her ugly friends. When she saw me, she hissed, I hope Mrs. Kerr whipped your butt. I said, who? Our teacher, duh. I blinked. We had no teacher named Mrs. Kerr. I asked Nancy what she was talking about. She just rolled her eyes and turned away. I asked Grover where Mrs. Dodds was. He said, who? But he paused first, and he wouldn't look at me. So I thought he was messing with me. Not fan funny, man, I told him. This is serious. Thunder boomed overhead. I saw Mr. Buner sitting under the red umbrella, reading his book, as if he'd never moved. I went over to him. He looked up, a little distracted. Ah, that would be my pen. Please, please bring your own writing utensil in the future, Mr. Jackson. I handed Mr. Buner his pen. I hadn't even realized I was still holding it. Sir, I said. Where is Mrs. Dodds? He stared blankly at me. Who? The other chaperone. Mrs. Dodds. The pre-algebra teacher. He frowned and sat forward, looking mildly concerned. Percy, there is no Mrs. Dodds on this trip. As far as I know, there has never been a Mrs. Dodds at Yancey Academy. Are you feeling all right? End of chapter one. Chapter two. Three old ladies knit the socks of death. This should be interesting. I was used to the occasional weird experience, but usually they were over quickly. This 24-7 hallucination was more than I could handle. For the rest of the school year, the entire campus seemed to be playing some kind of trick on me. The students acted as if they were completely and totally convinced that Mrs. Kerr, a perky blonde woman, whom I'd never seen in my life until she got on our bus at the end of the field trip, had been our pre-algebra teacher since Christmas. Every so often, I would bring a Mrs. Dodge reference on someone, just to see if I could trip them up, but they would stare at me like I was a psycho. I, I got so, it got so I almost believed them. Mrs. Dodds had never existed, almost. But Grover couldn't fool me. When I mentioned Mrs. Dodds to him, he would hesitate, then claim she doesn't exist. But I knew he was lying. Something was going on. Something had happened at the museum. I didn't have much time to think about it during the days, but at night, visions of Mrs. Dodds with talons and leathery wings would wake me in a cold sweat. The freak weather condition... Oh, the freak weather continued, whoops. Which didn't help my mood. One night, a thunderstorm blew out the windows in my dorm. A few days later, the biggest tornado ever spotted in the Hudson Valley touched down only 50 miles from Yancey Academy. One of the current events we studied in our social studies class was the unusual number of small planes that had gone down in sudden squalls in the Atlantic that year. I started feeling cranky and irrational most of the time. My grades slipped from D's to F's. I got into more fights with Nancy Boba Fett and her friends. I was sent out into the hallway in almost every class. Finally, one our English teacher, Mr. Nicol, asked me for the millionth time why I was too lazy to study for spelling tests. I snapped. I I snapped. I called him an old snot. I wasn't even sure what that meant, but it sounded good. The headmaster sent my mom a letter the following week, making it official. I will not be invited back next year to Yancey Academy. All right, everyone, that's going to be it for this session. Now, I hope everyone's having a great time. I know I am. Now, I'll see you next time. Peace out. This is Tappinator.